Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Drew Creel. And in this video, what I wanted to do was make a little podcast slash live stream style video where we're talking about right hand technique, particularly the, particularly the stuff that you hear in gent and metal, thrash metal, hard rock, the stuff that Metallica does, the stuff that Meshuggah does, um, and Periphery and all of those cool bands that, that we love. And I just wanted to go over the technique, like how to gent. How do you do that? How do you make that sound on the guitar? So that's what we're gonna focus on. Um, I'm not gonna tab anything out. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna focus on any particular riffs today. I'm just gonna play some of the things that just come to mind when I'm discussing the technique. Um, and so that's what the discussion is about. If you wouldn't mind doing me a huge favor, go ahead and like this video. Go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on any notifications. I would greatly appreciate that. Um, I'm trying to grow my channel and I'm hoping to do more things like this, hopefully live streaming here in the, in the near future. What I wanna do is talk about palm muting for a little bit and then I wanna talk about the term gent and what that is. So this is something that requires a lot of experimentation and a lot of trial and error to get it right. I remember when I was first learning palm muting, I could, I could pretty quickly do all of the down picking, all of this sort of thing. You know, I could I could definitely do that, but the thing that I really struggled with was the alternate picking and palm muting. Like the stuff that I heard stuff the stuff that I heard John Petrucci doing, like this sort of thing. You know, like alternate picking and and playing scales and and little runs. Like that sort of thing really blew my mind. I was like, how am I supposed to alternate pick and palm mute at the same time? And So that was the thing that I set out to do when I was a young player was like I, I started playing every scale that I that I could or every everything that I knew how to play. With that palm muting, even some of the higher strings, like and so what I'm doing is I'm just resting that that palm. I'm I'm just getting really comfortable with having my palm next to the bridge. And and so this is a this is a really important technique for anybody that plays thrash metal or death metal or even hard rock, you know, or any any type of rock. Uh, guitar style you need you need this in your you need that in your uh, little toolkit or your toolbox what that is or how I first experienced that was playing through a high gain kind of Marshall amplifier when I was a kid um, and I turned on an overdrive pedal I had a boss super overdrive pedal going into a Marshall JCM 2000 and I didn't. I didn't have the gain up super high. I had it maybe at uh, five, six, seven, somewhere in there. And then, what you're gonna do with your overdrive pedal is crank the level and turn the distortion or the overdrive down. Okay, not all the way, but like at one, two, or three, somewhere in there. And when you have those things happening, and then couple that with the bridge pickup of your of your guitar, you should really when we're talking about rock palm muting and gent we're talking about the bridge pickup and playing through that particular pickup okay that's that's just the one that you're going to need when we're talking about this technique you're going to combine all of those three things it doesn't matter what amp you use or if you have a line six spider on insane mode or if you have um uh, a boss katana or a line six helix or a helix stomp or really any amp, as long as it's like a high gain type of amp, you're gonna be fine with this, okay? I'm, I'm literally just using a um, overdrive pedal, like a, like a Tube Screamer style overdrive into the Diesel VH4. And you know what? I'll just post all my settings on here so you can see that if you want it, if you want to get this sound. And in a little bit here, what I'm gonna do is plug in the eight string and you'll, 
uh, it's going to be the same settings, you know? So once I kind of find a sound that I like, I just leave it, I leave it there. I don't mess with it that much. So if we're talking about the gear, you'd really want some type of humbucking guitar or humbucker guitar. If you have a single coil, that's okay. So what you're going to do is plug in your guitar into some type of noise gate, or if you have a noise gate on the amp model that you're using, you're going to go into the noise gate first, then you're going to go into the tube screamer, then you're going to go into the amplifier. So there's there's a lot of things happening in the in the signal flow. Some people even use two noise gates, one right after the guitar and then one after the tube screamer, but somewhere before the amp. So just another thing to consider. Um, and then you've got the, the gain setting on the amp is going to be somewhere between four and seven. And then what I tend to do is boost the bass and the treble and the presence and the depth of the amplifier. I boost those. I turn the mids down just a little bit. And, uh, that's about it. You know, uh, those are going to be the settings to get this kind of a sound. And if I was playing through a similar amp model or if I was using my Helix, um, you know, it would sound pretty similar, okay? Um, all of these high-gain amps have, have similar characteristics. Um, you just have to pick the one that you like the best. So let's talk a little bit more about the technique. So what I'm going to do is just experiment by playing an e, e minor chord or just like an, an E5 power chord. And I'm going to chug. I'm going to keep my, my hand like sort of off the bridge, and then I'm going to slowly bring it towards the neck like this. Until I find the sound that I like. And then I can start playing riffs. I can start... Okay, and uh, that's that's pretty much how this thing how this thing functions. Now, um, when I was a kid, I was a huge fan of this band called Dream Theater. Nobody's probably heard of them here, but there's a there's this guitar player named John Petrucci. One of the things that I really liked about John Petrucci is how he plays like alternate picking, but with the palm mute. Okay, when I heard that as a kid, I was like, I have to know how to go. You know. Where you're, where you're sort of palm muting and you're alternate picking and playing really fast. Like that sort of thing. And so I set out to do that. And I, I, I think I remember just playing just on one string almost exclusively, just like... What I'm listening for is the sound that the actual speaker makes, okay? And that's that sort of brings me back to that discussion about the Marshall. So when you're when you're palm muting and you're playing guitar, um, the sound the sound that you want to get is that air coming out of the out of the speaker, and uh, that's that's even what I'm listening for when I'm playing with some of these digital amps. I'm listening like, what does that speaker cabinet sound like? What does it sound like it's moving air, you know? You know, the technology is is so good and so highly detailed that you can hear all of those nuances now. You couldn't hear that stuff when necessarily when like the Line 6 Flex Tone or the Line 6 Pod was out. Uh, the, the speaker cabinet didn't have that realistic kind of presence yet, in, in my opinion. Nowadays, we have... Just a million and one different cabinet softwares, and we got impulse responses. Like we literally have too many options now, and I think guitar players just need to like, you know, limit their options and just play guitar. But that's a whole other discussion. But that's the palm muting thing. So now what I want to do is I want to talk about gent. So the the term gent is an onomatopoeia of the sound that the guitar makes when you're when you're playing the basically when you're making that basically that's 
that's the sound, jijit, you know? And the, the term was coined by Misha Mansoor, the guitar player, brainchild producer for the band Periphery, another band that no one's really ever heard of. Um, so he came up with that term, and the earliest, the earliest that I can remember it was um, in like 2007 or 2008, somewhere in there, um, when Mashuga had Mashuga had come out with the album Obzen, okay, and uh, this was like back in like the like the MySpace days, and Bulb had his own MySpace page and was coming up with songs. This was kind of in the early days of of Periphery, and I, I just remember people starting to use that term gent. And uh, what a lot of people say, you know, the first gent band is Meshuggah, right? Meshuggah has been around since 1988. In my opinion, Meshuggah, they sound like Metallica on steroids. So all the things you love about Metallica, all of the fast kind of thrashing stuff, they take that in and basically throw like advanced mathematics and like heavy weightlifting into the music. I don't know how they did it, but they have a very signature sound. The various bands over the years have tried to copy Mashuga and have been unsuccessful, right? So check out Mashuga if you haven't listened to them. And I would start, the album that I would start with would probably be Obzen. Okay, Catch 33 is my favorite album. Um, but I would probably start with Obzen and then go in reverse and then listen to their modern stuff. I actually prefer a lot of their older material, but that's because I'm an old guy. So, um, but that's where the term gent comes from. It's, it's an automatopoeia, which, um, automatopoeia is like boom, clack, you know, all of those sound effects from like the, the video games or, uh, comic book magazines. Like whenever you're reading a comic book and then you, you open up the page and then you see a big boom, you know, like like an explosion. That's what onomatopoeia is. Um, and and so Misha used used that to describe what Meshuga does. And to this day, it's it's basically become a whole musical genre. So uh, Meshuga would probably be like the godfathers of the genre, and then someone who actually put a word or a term attached to it would be Misha from Periphery who has a very successful career in the genre. Um, so, so that's what genting is. And, and so we're talking about gent now. And so what I'm going to going to do is switch guitars and play a little eight string for you. All right. So now we have a proper gent instrument. This is my Schecter Hellraiser hybrid guitar. And, uh, it's tuned to standard, standard tuning. So, got an F sharp on the bottom and then a B and then a normal guitar on top. So E A D G B E after that. Now Mashuga, what they do is they tune everything down one half step. So it would be, it would be an F on the bottom and then a B flat and then an E flat. That is their standard tuning across a majority of their records. There are, there are a handful of songs that, um, that Mashuga uses other uh, tunings on. So it's a little bit more difficult to play a guitar like this because you have more strings and um, more things to mute. So left and right hand muting gets a little difficult. So if I want to play a B power chord, like instead of an E, I'm using my thumb to kind of drape across the uh, the neck and then I'm right and so to be completely honest chord playing and and stuff is a little less common on an instrument like this and so if you listen to mashuga um most of the time they're just playing single string kind of riffs like Like that sort of thing. I'm t I'm totally just improvising, just random. You know, so um, 
I'm just playing a bunch of random stuff, but uh, what you're going to do is is just if you want to get good at this style, you get yourself an eight string or a seven string and you just start. You know, playing various exercises while trying to palm mute the entire time. So. But uh, really, the most important thing when you're playing the style is just to, to play different rhythmic things. It's more about the rhythmic development of the music than it is necessarily about the harmonic. Now, you have other bands that have sort of mastered both. Like, I would say that Animals as Leaders, you know, a lot of, a lot of their music uses harmonic and rhythmic development at a, at a very high level. And that's why it's so interesting to listen to. Now, when you listen to Meshuga. There's almost no melodic development. It's it's all rhythmic, and it's all very chaotic sounding. Um, it's it's chaos, but it has order, you know. And the, and their stuff is uh, probably the most rhythmically complicated music on the planet, next to maybe like Indian drumming and percussion. Meshuggah's music is pretty high up there in terms of rhythmic advancement, minus like the Black Page by Frank Zappa. <laughs> okay, so. So it's really about developing that groove and that feel with your right hand, you know? Okay, and, you know, I'm not even completely, like, warmed up or... Listen to me make excuses here. So that's really it, guys. Um, mastering that palm muting thing, just really just for hours, you know. Kind of messing around with amp settings, but then eventually finding an amp setting that that works, you know, and then just, you know, just sticking with it for a while and coming up with riffs. That right hand technique that like your palm mute sound is special and it's, it's unique to just you. No one else is really going to palm mute or play guitar the way that you do. And so it's really important to sort of develop your own sound. So really don't worry too much about what other people are using gear-wise um, and focus more on what you're doing with the instrument and how you're connecting. You know, you could you could be playing through a, a very inexpensive amp, you know, and, and there's even bands out there that I've heard that use, you know, Line 6 Pod from the, from the late 90s as their, their sound and they come up with very incredible sounding guitar tones. So we have the technology, we have all of the resources it's just up to you to pick up the guitar and make some sounds. So I'll leave it at that. If you guys have questions or comments, um, please leave that stuff below. I love hearing from you, and I love uh, having conversations about this sort of thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed kind of the way that I'm doing things now, and I'm hoping to um, get some live streaming happening very, very soon. So stay tuned, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.